Okay, for Kinesity Technologies, Luke and I. I want to say congratulations to Denver. They got the NCAA. Uh, they're a longtime customer. Uh, Michigan State, the Big Ten, go, go green. Okay, I'll give you some uh, give you some background on Kinesity Technologies. We're typically, our core business is cutting tools and it's improving the uh, efficiency of cutting for, um, uh, instead of like a sharp edge on a tool, we contour something that's like a third the thickness of a hair, which increases the efficiency of cutting like for uh, aerospace guys that uh, uh, we were awarded uh, three patents. Our customers are like Ford Motor Company, GM, Lockheed Martin, Honeywell, we're considered um, the experts in that type of edge prep technology in the world. Uh, in 2006, we were selected by the Department of Defense to uh, join the NCDMM, National Center for uh, Manufacturing and Machining. Uh, they see our uh, edge prep technology for cutting tools as critical to the defense of the United States, which is kind of cool. 2016, we did some uh, uh, impromptu testing with uh, the Penguins. Uh, consequently, we put together a prototype, and a prototype went into their hands in the uh, 2017 season while we applied for patents. Our patents for Canada issued in 2020, US in uh, 2021. Uh, we brought the machine to the uh, conference in Fort Myers in 2022. So we haven't been out that long. Anytime you machine steel, you can machine it, grind it, cut it with a saw, you're always going to have a burr. There is no way to get around it. Uh, from our metal cutting side of the business, we know that. That's a fact. Okay. So when you grind, your grinding, grinding burrs are going to be sticking out to the side of the blade. During grinding, what you have is you see sparks coming off. That's called rapid oxidation. That's the particles of the steel combining with oxygen and, and burning. The area that's under the wheel, between the wheel and the workpiece, it's trapped. So what you get is you get surface oxidation. That would be present in the hollow. Side stoning. Standard side stone. You keep the uh, stone vertical, run down the length. If you're if you're doing like a coated blade, and you want to keep the stone off, you know you kick the kick the stone at like a five degree angle. Uh, but both processes put the burr under the skate. Uh, what I say is, you know, like when you know you have somebody with a stone, yeah, we're stoning the blade or the burr off. Unless you can move that stone at 5920 surface feet. You're not going to get it off. What you're going to do is you're going to bend it, and that's that's what we're showing here. The burrs are vertical under the blade, so even if the the uh, the burrs are micron level, they're going to dig into the ice. Plus, you have elevated levels of friction caused by that uh, oxidation layer. The process to get rid of that oxidized layer has to be aggressive, uh, but you got to control it. If you go, if you're too aggressive, then what you're going to do is you can you'll take away the sharpness, not the burr, but the sharpness of the edge, and really make the the blade act like it's worn out. Um, the oxidation layer you cannot get off by any, any other method, uh, except for this. If you did, what you're gonna do is you're gonna ruin the edges doing it. The machine that we have, we show it with two uh, blade holders, but it can be, the blades can be held in the holders or the blades can be in the boot. Uh, you put them in, select the program, hit the button, less than a minute, uh, it's done. It takes the burrs off, it doesn't uh, alter or change the hollow. 
this is this is like 40 mag, uh, 40 mag. Here's your hollow. This is the side of the skate. Uh, you can see when you look across the hollow, you can see the burr standing up. If you looked at it from the side, it wouldn't be as visible. But you can test that after you stone it. Take your fingernail and you'll feel it. It's there. Um, we have friends at uh, University of Montreal, and they have a like a eight or ten million dollar scanning electron microscope, and they blew it up. 500 times size just to show you what the burrs look like and at 2500 uh, that's that's probably what a razor blade would look like under high mag but you can see in both uh, that edge is cleared off this surface right here is probably about three microns so uh, you can see that the burrs are gone This shows um, the test we made to show the reduced friction in a stone versus honed blade. We had uh, blades ground uh, by the uh, uh, equipment manager at uh, Robert Morris College in, in uh, Pittsburgh, okay? Traditional stoning, we put him, uh, uh, we took his blades, put him on uh, Luke, we aligned his blades and we're pulling. It's like a similar to a strain gauge, looking to see how much pressure it takes to break static friction. We did that 60 times, took the average, and that's where we got that. We took those same blades, we had them reground, no stoning, edge prep only, edge hone only. We put them back on, we did the same 60, set of 60 replications, and we saw about a 30% drop in friction, okay? That means that you can skate further, you can skate faster using less effort. We have about 30 of these machines out. Um, what we've been trying to do is um, see if we're compatible with the uh, uh, sharpening devices that are out there. So we have like 16 <coughs> machines paired with uh, Blade Master Blackstone. Very nice quality machine work, perfect. Uh, we have six pair with Elite. Uh, the rest are a, a mix of Sparks with Soda, Pro Sharp, you know, like uh, some of the uh, uh, guys at home sharpening skates for their kid. Uh, we have some out there for that. Reduction in friction allows you to glide. What we've been getting from uh, uh, like anybody that has used it, they talk about the uh, increase in glide. They said the glide, it feels like endless glide, but you can accelerate faster, glide longer. Um, the people that are running our blades, they're running our process, they seem to have a lot more success after the middle of the game, you get into the third period. Okay, they still got a little bit more gas in the tank because they haven't been, uh, working as hard. That being said, safety side, the, the root cause for the friction is the same root cause for um, cutting, lacerations. You correct one, you got them both. We're getting uh, feedback that players are feeling less knee and hip strain, um, muscle fatigue, they uh, uh, recover fast between shifts, between periods after the game. And we've not had any negative results or negative reports back on the, on the, the process uh, since we started it. Um, the blade you're gonna see here in this, it's a test for showing the cutting of the, uh, the ability of the blade to cut a neck guard. Uh, we had them sharpen on the blade master. That was really good. Uh, grinder. Um, we we have the, the neck guard is a Bauer brand. Uh, we picked that because it's a premium grade. We didn't mind spending a couple bucks. We wanted to show that uh, uh, there was going to be no question about the neck guard. Uh, it was good quality. Okay.
The blade in this device tail at a 10 degree angle. It feeds against a spool that has the neck guard wrapped around it. The uh, uh, impact area is about an eighth of an inch where the, the blade is driving down into it. And we have 20 pounds of resistance on it. Okay. We had to design this to do the test. Spring loaded this section. You take the blade, it's mounted in a uh, uh, blade holder. You see, and we push it up against, and you can see that it's going to contact that spool. It's going to push the spool out of the way. It's a newly sharpened blade right across the neck guard. It cut through the first layer. Uh, we weren't the intent wasn't to destroy the neck guard. What it was done, uh, the reason why it was done was to show that it has the ability to cut. Once we run it through the machine, this machine takes like 30 seconds, so I got one more lap to go. And we did it uncut. Okay, so we went right from the uh, test stand, right to the machine, right back to the uh, right back to the sand. Now when I move the neck guard, I only move it about a half inch because that was we, we knew we were going to do a lot of cutting on it and I wanted to save space. So when we cut it or when we run it, you'll be able to see the cut that was in it previously. right there. okay no cut. What we're saying is, is that um, to get the most uh, out of most, uh, I guess the best combination of safety, uh, neck guard and this with it. You know, it's like, it's almost like a seatbelt in an airbag, okay. Uh, the edge hone again, removes the burrs without uh, dulling the edge. The reducibility of uh, the blade to cut you get safer blades and you get a uh, higher uh, performance blade. It's consistently the same over and over. And if there's anything you want to do for a player, you want to give them consistently the same product that he's going to be skating on. Okay, here's a collage of machines that uh, you know we try to build them with uh, uh, the uh, team colors. That's Michigan State, we got Toronto up there. Uh, the guy that posted this online, he uh, uh, is a skate sharpener down in Pittsburgh. He has one of our machines, uh, Finney Sharpening. And he sharpens for the Lemieux camp. And after, after he did the camp, he posted that and it says, if it's good enough for Lemieux, it's good enough for you. And I thought that was, that was pretty cool. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's it. We're, uh, we're in booth uh, 609. Want to stop by and uh, check out the machines, uh, maybe do a little bit more one-on-one, -on -one. Uh, but that's it. Thank you. For anyone that's golfing, you're going to have to